there is this kind of code of silence within cultic systems, even within these awful teen treatment programs. Again, not all are awful, but some are tremendously awful. That's why an organization was started called Breaking Code Silence. Within teen treatment programs, very often you are not allowed, at least the ones that are tremendously unhealthy and controlling and abusive, you're not allowed to talk to anyone else. You have to walk past each other in the hallway in silence. And the only time you're allowed to talk to each other is usually within a group setting where it's your job actually to berate each other and to be as cruel as possible. And that's something that the leadership has cultivated so that people there really kind of do his or her work for them, give each other a hard time, keep each other in line. And that also wears at your conscience after a while. If anyone is telling you you have to be cruel to somebody else and it's for their benefit, think twice because you're going to end up doing something that feels cruel to them and is cruel to them, but ultimately is also cruel to you because you will feel guilty once you realize with clarity that it was never for their benefit. So it's most important to remember, I think, that you should always have a voice. And if you can't share your voice with people in the group, know that you can reach out to people outside. When a group has been in existence for a while, there are always going to be former members, the people who you're not allowed to talk to because they have information that the leadership doesn't want you to have access to about what's wrong with the group and why they left. But again, you will always have people you can reach out to. You just need to believe it. And you need to be able to believe that they're not evil people and they're not faulty people. And that's not why they left. They left probably for really good and honest and clear reasons. And I don't want you to be in a situation where you feel like you have been silenced for so long that you're not sure how to regain your voice, because it's hard actually to get the courage back to speak. And it would be wonderful. And part of the goal of this podcast is to help people be prevented and prevent themselves from getting into situations where they lose their voice. But always know that your voice is possible. There is something so integral about communication. That's why at the dawn of time when human beings started being human beings, there was the invention of language, how we communicate. Even if it wasn't images and pictures before there were letters, still people wanted to be able to say what was on their mind and notice things about the world and let people know what they've seen and express their thoughts and express their feelings and connect. Malala Yousafzai once said, we realize the importance of our voices only when we are silenced. It's so true. And I'm so glad she was able to find her voice and be the voice of so many others. Do what you can to help yourself and to help others never get to a place where you are silenced. But also know that if you are in that place right now, your voice is still there and it's powerful. You want to use it well and use it with the right people, not the people who are going to beat you down, not the people who are going to convince you you're wrong, not the people who have a vested interest in you remaining silent and docile and submissive. Reach out to those who have left, reach out to family and friends. Reach out to others who will be so happy to hear your voice.